Thank you, Brother Scott, each member of your family. We're grateful. What a blessing it is when we come to church as a group and certainly as a family. What a blessing that is, and we thank you, the Lord for that. I think about, as we think about the dedication service today, what we enable God to place his hand upon, God will take care of it. And I'll assure you, God will take care of it and keep it. And so today, this is not a confirmation. It's not a, a, an infant baptism, but it is a dedication for that we as Christians and families and parents realize our responsibility to those that are younger from the size of just a baby until they get completely grown. And even then, our prayer is still with them. Amen. God laid out this map in the Bible, and he did it through the children of Israel. And he told them in the book of Deuteronomy, which was the book of rehearsal, you may say. As you read the word of God, realizing that all these things that are laid out, and it's just prior to the book of Joshua, for Moses is making mention of the fact here that when you come to this place that the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and thy children shall ask of thee, and thou shalt answer them, and say, It was the Lord thy God that brought us forth out of the, out of the house of Pharaoh, out of the bondage of Egypt, and has given to us vineyards we didn't plant, houses we didn't build, wells we didn't dig, that we might know that he is God, and that we shall teach these things diligently until our children. No doubt today we as, as Christians and we as parents today, that some of us have our families grown. God gave and blessed us with two girls and a son that's in heaven today. But uh, thank God for all that he does. For what he does, he does it perfectly. So when he demonstrated to you and I the facts of our responsibility to our children and how that we can treat them and raise them to where that they are admonished by the things of God to where that we can be like the children of Israel was. You can look at what happened afterwards from this time in which that Moses had given them these instructions. And when they got to the promised land and was going across, and it was Kadesh Barbadia, same place that they'd went to some 40 years before. And God brought them right back to that same place. I've often wondered in studying the Bible, and I probably never know till I get to heaven, but how many times in that journey as they walked around that mountain, you study your Bible, you'll see that they walked around that mountain for 40 years. And they looked at that same place every time. And maybe they said in their heart there was those as Joshua and Caleb. They were young men at that time. And they may have said, had they have only listened to what I had to say and gone in and possessed the land. There may have been others that were there that didn't pay it any attention, just took it as it was. Then I believe they have to go by the cemetery where all of those that were buried 
above the age of 20 and realized that was their loved ones and their friends. I'm reminded as I stand here this morning of my responsibility as a pastor. I'm reminded of my responsibility as a father. Now I'm reminded of my responsibility as a grandfather. Then there's a young lady back there who is my great-granddaughter, and I'm reminded of my responsibility to her to help them and pray for them that God would raise them up and use them as a vessel for his honor and his glory. I pray that God do that. From what proceeded past this, I'm reminded that when they crossed over and they were given the responsibility of walking around Jericho, the day will come when all of us grew up and began to walk in this world. That was our Jericho. And God said it's time now to bring the walls down. And so they did what God said and the walls fell. Jericho is a type of the world. <laughs> if you read on over in Joshua's gospel, you'll find that the next thing that happened was a little place called Ai, up in the northern part. And so they'd gotten so confident that they had everything themselves under control. They said there's no great need to take a great party there to fight this battle. We'll just take this 360 men and go fight this battle. I want to tell you, there's none of us that's going to lose the win the battle without the Lord. Amen. They didn't ask God, how many should I take or how many do you want us to take? AI is a type of the flesh. You may make it by the world and say, I don't do what I used to do. I don't, I don't participate in what I used to participate in. I don't talk that way. I don't act that way. I don't drink that way. I don't party that way. But you better watch it. You'll lose the battle. We need to continuously pray that God give us strength to win the battle, whether it be over the world or over the flesh. James said, there's no temptation coming upon you such as is common to man. But with that same temptation, God shall make a way of escape. And I've said this a thousand times, I know, in these years we've been here. We read that verse and we read through it and we think, you know, I'm, I've not faced any temptation lately. Well, if you say that, chances are you're blind. Because we've all tempted. Amen. You're still dealing with this flesh. Am I right? It's hanging around our neck, and it will till the day we go to meet the Lord. There are two types of temptation that's mentioned in the Greek that's not in our English Bible. Dokimos temptation, which is an inward temptation of old desires, old things that the devil will bring up in our life. And we're tempted that way. And then there are those that, by those we may have associated with and done things that we shouldn't have done, but we did them. And that's our friends that we had prior to being saved. And they say, come on, go with us. That's parakmos temptation. That's outward temptation. James said, there's no temptation coming upon you. You say, why would you say all of that at a dedication service? I'll tell you why. These children are going to be faced as they grow up with these temptations. And the only thing that will stand between them and that temptation 
is the Word of God. Prayer can shield children. Amen. Come on, help me. So as I think about this, and we'll have her up here in just a few minutes, but I do want to share a thing or two before we do that. There are some things that we must realize, four of them in particular, of what our responsibilities are. As a church, as a Christian, as a parent, we have responsibilities. Amen. We have to, first of all, be faithful to our Lord. That's our first responsibility. As a father, as a dad, we had to be faithful to the Lord. Thank God for that. Secondly, we had to be responsible, and it's to be an example of the Lord Jesus Christ to those children that God has given us. An example. Christ living in you, the hope of glory. Talked about peace this morning, Brother Scott did. Boy, it's something when you can lay down at night with that peace, knowing that God's heard and answered your prayer in regards to your children. Amen. The third thing is that we realize our responsibility to our children for the Lord. The Lord's using us to mold and make them what he'd have them to be. Look it over at Jeremiah in the 20th chapter when God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and see the work on the potter's wheel. He's molding that clay. Hey, God's molded you and me too. And let me say this, he still got his hand on us. Now, do you know that preacher? John 17 says, those that the Father's given me, no man hath the power to pluck them out of my hand. Thank God for that. So as you think about this and think about responsibility, too many today want to shed their responsibility. All right? We see in all of these things today to try to occupy the minds of children. And some of that, and in this society, most of that is corrupting them. Come on. So we see, next of all, our responsibility is to keep the Lord before our children always. Amen. The Christ that liveth within you is the Christ of glory. Amen. And his glory fadeth not away. I'm grateful for that today. Right now, she's grateful for that bottle. And if you take that away, you're going to see a temper. Am I right? I've got to say this, sort of little humorous. I told them of the experience that I had with Beth when I was left alone to take care of her. And uh, she had, uh, well, how do you say it? She, what? Oh, she fixed the diaper. Yep, she did. And so I thought, eh, there ain't no way that I can do this. So we were in Florida. And I thought it was safe, so I took her outside and took the water hose and washed her. You think, you're a terrible dad. Am I, am I terrible, honey? See? And she's the only one to have a cause to be against me today. <laughs> but in the meantime, her mother pulled in the driveway. And that was not a pleasant experience. 
that honestly did happen, just as I said, that she had gone to get groceries and I was left with the responsibility. Well, now I've learned in these last few weeks that Mike has been given the award for the best diaper changer in the Vandover household. You've done what I couldn't do. We have a lot of fun in our family. I believe a family ought to laugh. I believe we ought to rejoice. The good things that God's given to us, rejoice over them. Because God is good. And not only good, but the Bible said he's great. And he's grateful or great to be praised. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we'll go further. and uh, You think we can pull this off? Okay. Come on up here with Papa, okay? Come on up here, Papa. I'd like to ask my family, each one of them, to gather with us up here, if you would. Each member of our family, come right on. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy, and I quoted much of this a while ago. This has been one of my favorite verses in my Christian experience. And I memorized it because it meant so much to me. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God brought me from where I was to where I am today. And what I am, I'm, I am by the grace of God. And the Bible said these words over here in the book of Deuteronomy, and I'll quote them as best I can and read some of them that I can't remember exactly. But at any rate, in the uh, sixth chapter, and he said, And thou shalt teach them diligently, seventh verse, unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou uh, settest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Our whole house rotates around the Lord. For every place that he's mentioned is what we're very much acquainted with in our house. We're to teach them to our children. And the Bible said in the verse 20, There'll be a day when your children will ask you questions. And these are the things which Moses mentioned in verse 20. And when thy son asks thee in thy times to come, saying, What means the testimony and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, when we were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us up out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore unto Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all the household before eyes. And he brought us out from thence that we might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. God saved your soul. He brought you out of bondage and set you on a pathway to the Lord. It's with a great deal of blessings today that I have this privilege. Chrissy and Mike attend the church in Simpsonville. and It's certainly a landmark to the lives of those that are live there godly church and I appreciate that for that interest we'll see if God allows it as we grow older year by year we'll see her grow and I, I hope and pray that 
I'll see the day when she calls and says, Papa, I got saved today. I got saved today. I believe that's on every mother and father, grandmother, grandfather. It is on my heart. We need that to teach the generations that's coming behind us that there is a vision that God has given to us that is real. But the Bible said without that vision, people will perish. And I pray God help us to see the vision in our hearts of this precious little girl. You know, you were supposed to be a boy. <laughs> so we'll just make you a tomboy. <laughs> what a blessing it is. But I'd like for all the Christians in the house to stand with us and pray with us as we dedicate her to the Lord and to pray for Chrissy and Mike as well as all of our family, Britt, Brittany, Blair, that have children today that's coming up in this society, that God would be there to help them to say no to the devil and yes to the Lord. Amen. That's our prayer. All right, let's pray, okay? Okay. Let's bow our heads, each one praying, if you would. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence. Oh, how thankful we are. God, for this day and what it means to us. And Lord, we but lay this precious soul at your feet. And God, we pray that you might keep your hand of grace and truth and mercy upon her and upon Blair. God, upon each one, Father, as parents, to make the decisions, Father, that will mold their life and create in them that upright spirit. We pray now as we commit them. I think about people in the Bible. I think about Hannah when she came and God had answered her prayer and she dedicated that child. God, we do that today as well. For we know you've not changed. Our world has changed. But God, you haven't. So we place her in your care and ask God for your leadership and for guidance in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.